Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hey, nice to meet you guys. My name is Roberto. Roberto Martinez, I want to apologize. I owe you guys two minutes and 42 seconds. Um, I had a little, I have a little, I had a little bit of issues with my internet and I had to restart my router and it, it just became okay. really, really problematic. Eh, bienvenidos a todos. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo están? How's everybody doing? Very good. Thanks. Great. Great. Everybody's doing good? Okay. Bienvenidos al curso Inglés Corporativo. El curso en sí se llama Inglés Intermedio Módulo 2. Intermediate Module 2. Right. With that, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about me and about how we work the modules. Okay. Una okay. vez más, eh, mi nombre es Roberto Martínez. Les quiero hablar un poco acerca de mí y de dónde, eh, un, un poquito acerca de mi background. Eh, tengo un poquito, bueno, tengo 16 años de estar haciendo esto. Eh, he estado facilitando eh, clases de inglés. Eh, se puede decir que ha sido una combinación de, de varias clases. Eh, he estado enseñando cursos de ventas avanzados. Eh, a la igual, eh, Inglés para conversación o conversational English, communication. Okay. And the idea is for conversation to be as fluent as possible. Entonces, ustedes se van a fijar que muchos de, de los módulos, bueno, de nuestros módulos que vamos a estar compartiendo, tienen que ver eso. Eh, una explicación de por qué están las reglas así como están. Y una, un ejemplo de cómo usarlo en conversación. Porque la idea es no solo aprender en inglés, sino que usarlo como una herramienta, especialmente hoy en día, así como estamos, ¿verdad? Eh, estuve trabajando con Concentrix, eh, ahí por El Salvador del Mundo, y la mayoría de los años que yo estuve dando las clases de inglés fue con Concentrix. Eh, Advanced Conversational English. Eh, en ese momento encontré a Insaforp y con Insaforp me gustó mucho porque me dieron la oportunidad de, eh, de comenzar a facilitar clases de inglés básico, intermediate y advanced. Entonces tengo la opción de, de poder dar eh, tres tipos de clases. Me gustó muchísimo y lo comencé a hacer y pues aquí estoy eh, para servirles. Eh, estaba dando las clases de inglés básico. Eh, que fue la última que terminé y las clases de inglés básico usualmente las hago en su mayoría en español y un poquito de inglés y así vamos poquito por poquito. Nosotros en esta clase, por ser intermedio, lo vamos a hacer un poco diferente. Va a haber un poquito más de inglés. La idea es to start challenging you. You have to get the idea that English is a beautiful language. It is very, um, I want to say that it's, it, it's very reliant on sounds. So it's very important for us to practice as much as possible. But you also have to know the rules. ¿Por qué es que están las cosas así como son? ¿Por qué es que el inglés es así como es? Eh, ¿Cuáles reglas son? Porque el inglés tiene un montón de reglas que a la misma vez eh, son bien estrictas, pero se contradicen la una con la otra. Entonces, todas esas cosas a mí me las enseñaron y creo que la mayoría de nosotros la, la, las pudimos estudiar cuando estuvimos en la escuela. Eh, when, they, when they were teaching us grammar, English grammar, el famoso grammar que le dicen. English grammar is fantastic porque te dice cada una de las reglas ¿Por qué ocurren? ¿Cuándo la tenés que implementar? Y de la misma manera me gusta a mí enseñarlo. So, for example, if we talk about a noun, I want you to know what a noun is. Y yo quisiera que ustedes tuvieran ese entendimiento al 
porque se ocupa bastante. You use a lot of nouns. You use a lot of adjectives. You use pronouns, verbs. Y cada una de estas tiene reglas diferentes. Entonces, a mí me gusta ver, por ejemplo, si vamos a ver pronouns, yo, I, I like to talk about what a pronoun is and identify how it works before we start using it in a conversation. That way you have an idea of what something is and you can follow the rule and it makes it a lot easier at the end. Así es que vamos, vamos a ir poco por poco. Eh, pero eso sí, por favor recuerden que vamos a tener un poquito más de inglés como conversación. Eh, no es necesario que ustedes participen al 100%, así es que no se lo vayan a tomar así como que, ay no, este teacher ya me va a comenzar a molestar. No, no es así. Si usted quiere participar, bienvenido. Eh, con eso, ¿quiénes de ustedes, para quiénes, bueno, quiénes de ustedes es la primera vez que toman un módulo con Insaforp? First time with Insaforp. English. For Yo estoy aquí vez. por primera vez. Primera vez, primera vez. Ok. A ver, eh, si es su primera vez, eh, un poco de las reglas. Eh, y cada, cada uno de nosotros funciona un poco diferente con las reglas. Eh, yo, por ejemplo, la única regla que yo, les voy a, que yo les voy a pedir es que trabajemos la plataforma. I need you guys to work on the website and I need you guys to work on the platform. Es sumamente importante. Si tú no trabajas la plataforma, aunque tú hayas venido a todas las clases virtuales, tú no vas a recibir un certificado eh, determinado. Entonces, so you, you don't get a certificate if you just come to class. You have to finish the platform. Entonces, la regla número uno para mí es trabajen la plataforma y terminen la plataforma. Teacher, y, y tengo que venir a clase, a las clases virtuales. No. No es obligación que vengas a la clase virtual, pero sí se pide o en formato de recomendación. Te lo recomiendo mucho. ¿Por qué? Porque vas a escuchar, eh, por ejemplo, cómo es que funciona una pronoun y también lo vas a poder practicar. Entonces, te lo recomiendo si tú vas por el paso de que quieres mejorar ese inglés. Entonces, la única manera de mejorar es practicar. Y si tú vienes a clase, entonces, Primero Dios, lo vas a lograr practicando. Esa es la única regla. Eh, no tienen que tener su cámara encendida. Así es que si ustedes tienen una video cam y ustedes dicen, ay, no me puse el make up, no, no, me, no quiero que el teacher me vea así, no se preocupen. Eh, pueden apagar la cámara y siempre mantener los audios. Eh, si te cortaron el pelo así un poquito mal y no quieres que el teacher se esté burlando de vos toda la clase, no te preocupes. Solo el audio y con el audio es suficiente. Eh, si tú quieres, puedes dejar la cámara encendida. El único que tiene obligación de dejar la cámara encendida soy yo. Así es que voy a hacer todo lo posible para mantenerla siempre encendida y que ustedes la, me, puedan, me, puedan, me puedan ver ahí con mi, con mi universo en el background. Ok. ¿Alguna pregunta que ustedes tengan antes de iniciar el, la introducción? No preguntas. Cero preguntas. No, no, it's okay. All is okay. Ok, ok. Si en alguna de estas ustedes sienten que tal vez estoy hablando demasiado inglés, entonces también ustedes me pueden decir, mire, teacher, fíjese que da, bájale un volumen, un poquito, un poquito de volumen al, al, al inglés. Y yo lo que voy a comenzar a hacer es, voy a, des, tal vez pueda hacer que diga las frases en inglés y luego se las vaya a repetir en español, o se las diga en español y luego se las diga en inglés. ¿Estamos bien así? Uh, no, I want to tell you something. We need yes, some yes. more English, you know. So more English. I like that. Yeah. I like that, Alex. I like that. Yeah. But yes. I want I want everybody to be comfortable. Okay. <laughs> I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. And so if at any time you feel overwhelmed, please let me know. And then I'll 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 lower okay. I'll lower the volume a little bit, okay? All right. So Let's get started. Let, let's do. You prefer you prefer English. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. We say that like 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 Alice. Okay. Because we'll practice more and learn more. 
I, that, that's the way I feel. That's the way I feel. The more practice, the better. Okay. Yeah. Um, with that, eh, les quiero decir que por veces, si les digo alguna palabra en español, sometimes the words don't come out quite right. Así es que si ustedes son así unos grammar nazis en español, por favor, déjenmelo saber. I will fix the word and I will thank you for it, okay? Same thing from my side. If you guys are speaking in English and you say a word and you mispronounce it, I will also be a grammar Nazi and I will tell you, hey, this is the way you pronounce it. And then we're going to work on how to pronounce that as a, as a group. Okay, everybody okay with that? Yes, sir. Yes. That's, hey, that's good. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's do, let's do a quick introduction uh, one more time. And I want to I wanna talk about three things, three simple things today. Um, I'm going to put okay. them in the chat and I'm going to put number one, I want to know your name. Number two, I want to know where you are from. And number three, easy. Where did you learn English before here? So, name where you are from and where did you learn English before joining English Corporativo or Corporate English with Insaforb. So let me let me start so that you give you guys an idea of how, how it goes. Hello everybody. My name hey, is man. my name is Roberto Martinez. Nice to meet you all. I am from San Salvador, but mm. currently I live in a popa, a popa city. A popa city. I learned my English a really long time ago. And I started learning English in, um, what's it called? <laughs> Centro, oh my God, I, I even forgot the name. The one that's right there by, <laughs> por, por, metro, por Metro Centro? ¿Cómo se llama? Centro Cultural? Yes. Cultural Center. Yeah, Cultural Center. I, I started right there. I took, I took, I think, three classes. And then from there, I got a job in a call center. And once I got a job in a call center, oh my goodness, uh, the sky was the limit because everybody in the call center <laughs> spoke English. And so there was no way I could speak Spanish. Um, even if I tried to speak Spanish, I couldn't because nobody Ooh. else would speak Spanish to me. So I had to speak in English. And so everywhere I went, it was just English. So you could say uh, Centro Cultural is where I started. And then the call center as an industry, as a, as a job, is where I really got good in speaking English. And then from there, I took many courses in the university. But, you know, that's a different story. Um, and now mm -hmm. I'm in Insaforp, and here, I, here you have me, and I'm your teacher. All right. So nice to meet you, everybody. Nice okay. to meet you as a class. All right. Amazing. Who would like to go first? Volunteers? Volunteers? Okay, we'll try. Well, all right. I think I think somebody. I think that was Angel. Angel. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, my name is Angel Arbalo, and I live in Soyapango City. All right, all right. <laughs> and I started and I started studying English. Well, the first thing I was high school, and, and so it was so, so difficult for me because, well, I don't learn a lot. But now I try different ways to learn, and I think so that the uh, this way that I, I learned helped me to learn more and practice. And well, yeah, I'll start because I like the music in English, especially rock and roll. And for this reason, uh, I introduced in this in this language and try to learn more because like me, they sing the songs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. And, uh, and try to learn more. Uh, um, anyways, uh, some ways that uh, I think so that I helped me a lot uh, was this is the music and watching movies. Nice, nice to have you aboard. 
in English, uh, uh, with subtitles in Spanish. Right, um, right. I, I, I learn more vocabulary because any any word that I hear and, and don't understand, I pause it and repeat again. It's, I work in this way, <laughs> but I think so that it helped me so a lot. Nice. Okay, yeah, that's a nice way to learn. All right, now, welcome aboard and welcome to the class. All right, somebody Thanks. else wanted to go? Alex? Thanks. Okay. I got a second. Uh, uh, hi, everybody. Hello. My name is, my name is Alex Cornejo. <coughs> uh, I also live in Serpango in Las Brisas neighborhood. Um, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's, um, well, I started to learn English in a, also in a high school. And then I went to a, a small academy, an English academy in, on was was over there on 29 29th Street. All right. Um, so, but after that, I, I always trying to learn on my way. You know, reading books, listening to music, English music, watching movies, a lot of movies. You know, and and this is the way I like to talk more. English, get my fluence well, and then uh, find a job in this area, you know, English area job. That's, right. I think that's our, our short term, term goals, goals, right? right. Is uh, trying to find in this English area. All right. Yeah. Well, that works. Yeah. Cool. Welcome aboard, Alex. Thanks. All right, volunteers. Anybody else? Voluntario. A girl, a girl. A girl, a girl. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen. Me, me a ver, ¿quién dijo me? ¿Quién dijo me? A ver, pase adelante. Daisy. Daisy, Hi. pase adelante. Hello, hello. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Daisy Janira Garcia. I, I, Living in Soyapango, okay. in Guadalupe, and I studied English in different academy, but in English Corporativo, I started at the beginning, the in the module module one. Okay, module one. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Daisy, and welcome. Thank you. Thank All right. You. A ver, otro brave soul. Me. Oh, Iris. Hold on. I think they beat you, Xavier. Hold on, Xavier. You can go next. A ver, Iris. Yeah. Por favor. Hello. Hello there. My name is Iris Palacios. Hello. I live in Soyapango. <laughs> Hello, Soyapanecos. <laughs> Hello. Come uh, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before English Corporativo, I learned English in, in the school. Okay. I love English, but it's very difficult mantener una conversation. Así que espero mejorar. I hope, so. I hope so too, and I hope I can help with that. Okay, thank you very much. All right, Xavier, dale. Okay. Uh, hi, good day. Good night. My name is Xavier Rivas. Um, I'm from San Salvador, but I live in Soyapango. Uh, I study. Before here, I studied in the Academy of Pair, but they never taught me how to keep a conversation. So I was boring and I'm here. Okay, all right, Xavier. And, and you know, English Europeo, I think Academia Europea, Xavier, I, 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 went to, I went to teach there for like, I, I, one of my friends told me if I can help him with one of the classes. And I really liked the way they have everything set up. So I'm, I'm actually, you know, happy that you chose us because, <laughs> you know, the place looked really nice, man, when I went. Okay. Xavier, thank you very much and, and, and welcome. Welcome aboard. Thank you. A ver, ¿quién más? ¿Voluntarios? ¿Dedocráticamente? No, ¿quién dijo? ¿Quién dijo yo? Me. A ver, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Greta Quevedo. Oh, I'm living yeah. in San Salvador, to be exactly near to the National Zoo. Okay. And I did learn English at the high school, but I never could practice and I have been trying to improve by myself. 
So um, the last week I discovered this place and I make it an online exam to, to, to come here and that is all. Nice, all right. That's good, good to hear and welcome aboard, Gretel. Thank you very much. A ver, volunteers, voluntarios. Oh, el teacher me, a ver, dele. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I am Giselle Moreno, and I live San Juan Pico, La Libertad. Okay. And now I study English at the university named My International. Okay. And well, every day I try to bury my English skills, and and I study every day for that. Oh. All right. Well, welcome aboard, Giselle, and I hope that you enjoy the class and that the class helps you get better. Thank you. All right. Who else? Volunteers? Me. Voluntarios. Pase adelante, por favor. Thanks. My name is Karen Hernandez. I live in San Salvador, and I learned English at GMC and by myself. I okay. always try to learn new things because uh, I need to learn more about vocabulary or things like that. You right. know? So I just want to uh, learn more in this class. And that's why I am here trying to keep a conversation and trying to learn more. And so I am shy, shy sometimes. That's why I try to <laughs> be uh, how it's going in this moment that's why nice well thank you very much um remember it, it, you don't have to turn on the cameras ever then that goes for everybody as long as you keep the audio that's okay if you want to volunteer you it's also up to you um uh, aquí a la fuerza ni los zapatos verdad entonces that's same good. same deal same deal goes here i want you guys to feel as comfortable as possible all right, uh, somebody else? Quick intro. Me? Uh, pasa adelante, please. Hello, my name is Ives Villeta. I am from San Salvador. I live in Ayutuxepeque. I, I learn English in the Prolingua Institute. Okay. And then, English Corporativo. All right, nice. Welcome aboard, Yvette. All right, who else? Volunteer, Car Carla? Yo veo que Carla tiene la manita ahí. Sí. A ver, Carla. Yes. I'm from Armenia, Sonsonate, but in fact, I live in Lourdes. Okay. Uh, I was studying English in Institute and uh, Prolingua at Prolingua Institute, but before uh, before I began here, but I hope to to get new vocabulary, new vocabulary. I hope I can help with that. Welcome aboard, Carla. All right, next volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. Woo. Me. Pase, pase hey, adelante. Hi, hello. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Maria Isabel. I live in San Francisco City. I started uh, studying English and English for four people. Okay. From March 2020. I practice the language uh, with my blog and the listening. Uh, the program in English and the right. All right. Well, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Nice to have you in class. Thank you. Thank you. A ver, alguien más? Volunteer? Me, teacher. Pase, pase adelante. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Roberto Celaya, and I live in, in San Salvador all, all my life. And uh, I started to study English in the high school, but after I continued in, the, in association at University of El Salvador, and I hope to learn 
a lot with, with you. Fantastic to hear. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. Tocayo, tocayo ahí. <laughs> Yes. Welcome aboard, welcome aboard. A ver, volunteer, volunteer. Me. Pase, pase adelante, por favor. Okay, my name is Edgar Mauricio. I am from San Salvador. Before English Corporativo, uh, I studied English at school since years, six years old to 17, but I forgot my English every year. Then continue <laughs> right. study English at university and ONG, and now here. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, you know, it happens to a lot of people when you, um, it used to happen to me when I used to, uh, like, for example, if they told me to give a class in Spanish, because we, we did that, um, I would give the class in Spanish, it would go for two weeks, and then when I came back to English, ya se me habían olvidado, fíjate, ya, 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 me, ya me escuchaba medio rarito. Entonces, and it happens in both ways. It happens when you speak uh, Spanish and it happens when you speak English. So, so, you know, don't worry about it. It happens, Edgar. Welcome aboard. A ver, ¿quién más? ¿Quién más? Volunteers. Roberto, Roberto. Tocayo, otro tocayo. Roberto Alas. A ver, pase adelante, amigo. Hello. Hi. Everyone. Hello. Uh, I'm Roberto Alas. And I was born in San Salvador and I'm living in Lupango. Uh, well, I studied English at Don Bosco for a few months in high school. And I hope to learn um, uh, the grammar here because I practice always with friends and I don't have a good grammar. So I, I would like to practice and improve my English. Nice, nice to hear. All right, Roberto, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, sir. Bienvenido. A ver, ¿quién más? Volunteer, volunteer. Ya no, democráticamente. Voy, vamos a ocuparla así. A ver, Ángel Martínez. Angel. Quick introduction. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. <laughs> I, I live in Santa Ana City. Uh, I study English uh, most time. Uh, I need practice uh, more English. All right. Um, yes. Uh, well, we can help with that, Angel. What? We can help you with that. Welcome aboard, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you, Angel. Thank you. Jose, Jose, Jose. Hello, hello. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Good evening, guys. I am Jose Perez. I am from San Salvador City, right? But I actually live here in, in Mexicanos. This is my hood. I used to be in many academies these years, right? After here, I remember back in the days, last year, GMC and the all academies that I went. And I, I, I want to be here because I want to learn more English and improve, improve my English and my skills also. Nice. All right. Hopefully we can help with that, Jose. Thank you very much and welcome aboard, sir. A ver, ¿quién va? Felipe, Felipe Mirón. Felipe. Hi, teacher. How are you doing? Good evening. Uh, I, I am Felipe Miro, Felipe Francisco Miro Linares. Uh, I am from Santa, Santa Ana City, but I live in San Diego. All right. Um, I studied English at the university in, in the Korea. Okay. Uh, uh, I studied doctoral in medicine. All right. Uh, All I, right. I hope to learn a lot. Uh, I hope I can teach you a lot, Felipe. Welcome aboard, sir. Thank you. All right. Daisy, Daisy Garcia, did you go? Have you passed? Have you introduced yourself yet? Daisy, can you hear me? 
si está hablando, creo que está en mute. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Excelente. Ya, uh, ya pasó uh, usted, Daisy. Yes, yes, teacher. Ok, ah pues, ah, pues pasamos. A ver, Miguel Franco. Gracias, Daisy, disculpe. Miguel Franco. Hey, hello, everybody. How are you, teacher? Ah, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you. Okay. Okay, my name is Miguel Franco. I live in Santa Tecla. Okay. I studied English at ITCA a long time ago. After I finished my, my classes, my English classes, I didn't practice a lot of English. Nowadays, my English, I, I, I think so, is, uh, is decreasing because we, or oh, I didn't speak a lot or get a, a, flu, a fluid conversation. Okay, okay. And now I, I would like to improve my English and I find this way to do it. And I think so this is a good way. And I, I would like to practice a lot with you and, and everybody. And I would like to, that you speak a lot of English because if you speak a lot of English, we, we, we are going to understand very well. And All right. Yeah, I can do that. And that, that is the idea. We are, we are here to, to learn English. If you speak a lot of English and, and speak and, and listen English, your comprehension and your pronunciation is going to be better. Nice. Nice to hear. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miguel. Welcome aboard. All right. Moving down the line, vamos con Mariana. Mariana Aguilar. Quick introduction. Hi. Hi. Uh, well, my name is Mariana Aguilar. Uh, I'm from San Salvador. Okay. And first I learned English in school. And then I studied English too at Universidad Don Bosco. Okay, okay. And now I'm here. <laughs> nice, nice to have you on board and welcome to the class. Thank you very much, Mariana. Yes. Kenya. Si me ayuda con la introducción. Hi. Hi, Kenya. Hello. Nice to meet Hi, you. Hi, my name is Kenya Kandrai. Uh, I live in Soyapango. I started learning English in Direct English Academy. I study University uh, Laurel. And that's all. Okay. All right. Thank you. Welcome aboard. A ver, tenemos Carla. Carla, have you gone? Ya, yes, ya, how are you? Doing very how good. Thank, thank you very much. I'm doing good. Um, I am Carla Iriondo. My name is Carla Iriondo. Hello. I live in Sonsonate City, uh, but I was born in Huachapan City. Okay, okay. I, I study English at a school. And um, English Corporativo, I hope to learn uh, very much with you, teacher. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I hope, I hope I teach a lot. Thank you, Carla. Welcome aboard. Uh, let me see. I think I only have a couple left. Uh, Eduardo, have you gone? Ya pasó, Eduardo. Eduardo. Si está hablando, está en mute. No lo escuchamos. Eduardo, are you there? <laughs> ¿Cómo dice? Hello. A ver, hello, hello. A ver, quick introduction, Eduardo. Hello, teacher. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Okay. Uh, uh, my name is Rodrigo Eduardo. Uh, I live in, in the Ayutuxtepeque. Uh, I am from El Salvador. Uh, I I study uh, English Corporate in and in University Universe National. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, well, so, I think that's pretty much it. And uh, thank you very much. Welcome aboard, sir. A ver, and last but not least, I hope, Monica, Monica Raquel. Hi, everyone. 
Hello, hello. Um, my name is Monica Solorzano, and I was born in San Vicente, uh, where I currently live. Um, I started studying English in high school at the European Academy, and then I have been learning vocabulary on my own. I signed up for this class because I'm interested in learning grammar. Nice, okay. Thank you very much. Did I miss anybody? I alguien que haga falta. Is there anybody missing from the introduction? Did we get everybody? Yes, okay, I'm gonna take that as a yes. All right, so we're gonna start with sharing the screens. I know that you guys are probably, probably, uh, pretty much used to this. Uh, I think except for Gretel, who, who's her first time with INSA4, especially virtually. And this is how we start and this is how we pretty much do our work. Um, to start it off, I wanna talk to you guys about the work platform, La Plataforma de Trabajo. If you guys are gonna say Inglés Corporativo in Inglés, even though you shouldn't have to because it's a name, it's a company name, so that one usually doesn't change. Una de las reglas en inglés es un nombre, por ejemplo, no se cambia. Mi nombre es Roberto y así lo voy a decir en español y así lo voy a decir en inglés. Same thing happens cuando tú tienes, por ejemplo, un website y ese website se llama Inglés Corporativo. However, this site has a name in English. It's called Corporate English. So if you guys are going to say Inglés Corporativo in English, tendría que ser Corporate English. ¿Estamos bien hasta ahí? Corporate English. Ese es el nombre de la plataforma y de la, eh, de la escuela, si se puede decir así, de la Academia de Inglés. Corporate English. And what we work with is a platform, una plataforma, una website. It's a website, it's an application, it's an app. Una aplicación, app. Una website, eh, pues la plataforma de trabajo, plataforma de trabajo en línea. Comenzamos el módulo. The name of the module is called English Intermediate Mod Module 2. Módulo, module number 2. Each of these modules has five different sections. And each of the section has different lessons. Hay unas que tienen variación, so you have variation. Some lessons or some sections are a little bit longer and some are a little bit shorter. But for the most part, you're gonna find at least 10 different lessons. So son 10 diferentes lecciones, en, se puede decir en promedio. And what you do, or the only thing that you need to do is you go into a section, you work, a lesson or you select a lesson and then you complete it. So you select it, you let it load, and then you read through it and you click next. Once you do that, you're gonna come to different lessons that have videos. Hasta este momento, ¿cómo vamos? ¿Tienen alguna pregunta? Se los voy a repetir en español, just to ensure. Oh, we are good, you know. You guys are good, you guys are good? Yeah, we are yeah. good, don't worry. All right, so It'll section number one, section number one starts off with the objective, and then you start with videos. Now, each of the videos has a different theme, or a, I, I wanna say that each of the videos has a different goal. And the idea is, if you guys look at the videos, it tells you, hey man, you're gonna be doing a conversation. You have to listen to this conversation. And whatever the videos talk about, it transfers over to the different sections and the different lessons. For example, this conversation that you guys see here, which is turn down the TV, actually links up to the following lessons and it works together 
with the other lessons and the different knowledge checks that you guys are going to do. Entonces, los exámenes y las lecciones están conectadas una con la otra. All right? So, for example, we start off with the conversation, which is turn down the TV, and it talks about something very specific. And then it goes into lessons objectives. Then it goes into the part verbs with responding and request, the knowledge check, the lesson objectives. And then you guys see how we begin to work on pronunciation. So for us in this particular module, pronunciation is actually very important. And the majority of our work is going to be talking about pronunciation, conversation, and how to implement on our daily conversations. Okay, is everybody okay so far? Yes, that's nice. nice. All right, nice. okay. So in the previous classes, uh, I want you guys, I want you guys to see, can you guys all see my screen? Yes. Okay, yeah. excellent. So what do we take from the video? Well, the video talks about a conversation and the main emphasis of that video was turn down the TV. And what it's talking about is two part verbs or phrasal verbs. Ahora, you guys are not gonna hear two part verbs very often. Um, actually, the video mentions it a lot, but in reality, what you guys will hear is phrasal verbs, fraseales, or verbos fraseales, phrasal okay. verbs, okay? Right. Have you right. guys heard, have you guys heard of phrasal verbs before? Yeah. Yes, sir. With okay, great, great, great to hear that, because that's exactly what we're going to jump into. Phrasal yes. verbs in the video talks very specifically about nouns, pronouns, and using them in that way. But when you guys hear phrasal verbs, it is general. In general, there is one rule. And the rules are, or they take prepositions and particles. That is what gets used the most. En el video se ocupa verbos fraseales, pero ocupan nouns y ocupan pronouns y verbs. Aquí nosotros vamos a ocupar the general use of a phrasal verb, which is what gets used the most. And what gets used the most is a preposition and particles. I want you guys to think about that when you guys think about phrasal verbs, okay? So what is a phrasal verb? A phrasal verb is a multi-verb. Two, it could be three, and sometimes it could even be four different verbs that are being incorporated together. Now, for us, <laughs> we are only going to use maybe two, possibly three, where you guys will see examples. So two verbs and three verbs. And that's pretty much it. I don't want you guys to get overwhelmed. Some of the easy examples for you guys to remember is that a phrasal verb, in the way that we're going to be using it, will take a made up, well, it, it, it is a multi-word verb that is made up of a main verb. And at least one is either a preposition or a particle. So every time you hear a phrasal verb, that phrasal verb will have one preposition and one particle. Keep this in mind because when we talk about how to pronounce it, we're going to focus on this again. So what is it? What is this? What is a phrasal verb? Well, what it does 
is it takes a meaning, it breaks it, and it creates a different meaning. So if you guys hear something, once it becomes a phrasal verb, it will mean something else after it has gone to change. So some of the examples that I have, for example, to break. When you guys hear the words to break, what does it mean? Que significa to break? And we can do the translation into Spanish. Que significa to break? Romper. Impure. Okay. Romper. Romper, quebrar, okay, good, good. To break. And that's pretty simple, right? Because, oh, to break, I know what that means. I broke the glass, you know. Quebrar. Quebrar, you broke the plate, you broke the car. You know, something broke. So to break something is to physically take it apart. You know, doing it, for example, when you throw a plate on the ground, right? That's breaking something. So the phrasal verbs come into play because they take the same word and then they give it a different meaning because now we added something and it just became something else. For example, you have to break, okay, es romper. But now we added the word away. Y si lo ocupamos de la misma manera and we say to break away the meaning is different yeah. because now it means to separate from a group. It is no longer the same. So now you guys notice how the only thing we did was add a word to break away. And now the meaning has changed. Yeah. We do it again and we put to break down. And now it means that my car doesn't work anymore. My car broke down. To break down, to stop working. We take another word and we change it. And look at how now it's to break into. Ahí está el mañoso. He's going inside your window. And now He's breaking into your house. Ahora, you cannot translate that into Spanish. Está quebrándose adentro. You can't say that, right? So you got to think, you have to think of the meaning. What does it mean? Si el mañoso está entrando por la ventana and he's breaking into your house, ¿qué está haciendo? Robando. Está robando. Está entrando a la fuerza tu casa. Right? So now, so now it changes the meaning, right? Right? So then that's why phrasal verbs are so important to understand because in the United States, in American English, this gets used a lot. And when I tell you a lot, it's a lot. In a simple conversation, you're going to have a lot of these. You know, you, you might have maybe 10 or 20 instances where somebody did this, they used a phrasal verb to break out, to break out of. Si ustedes se fijan, is the same words to yeah. break. And the only thing that changes is that you're adding words as you're moving along, depending on what conversation you want to have. Okay. So now, depending on, <coughs> depending on the situation. That is correct. Todo depende de qué es lo que tú estás diciendo y qué conversación necesitas tener. So, okay. for example, we're still using to break. Look at this one. To break is still there. That is the main verb. Now we're going to use the preposition of in. Okay? Now, when you do that, you change the meaning of the word itself. And you could do it in many different ways. For example, to break in is one example. To catch up 
to catch up. What do you guys think to catch up means? ¿Qué significa to catch up? Atrapar. Ok, atrapar es una. Eh, imagine, imagínense que vamos corriendo en un maratón. Y yo voy súper adelantado porque soy un súper atleta, ¿verdad? El súper atleta teacher. Pero tú tomas Gatorade y te da una fuerza inmensa y de repente comenzas a correr mucho más rápido and you are going to catch up. Eso. You are going to catch up. You are going to blow up. ¿Ya han escuchado ustedes el término to blow up? Yeah. An explosion, right? It could be an explosion. Alex, how about if I tell you that my TikTok just blew up? Right. You got, ¿Qué significa uh, eso? Yeah. There's many people watching this movie, the TikTok. Um, there we go, right? The TikTok, man. Oh, my God. The teacher has a wonderful TikTok and everybody loves it and it just blew up, <laughs> right? So to blow up. Yeah. Different meanings. Correcto, correcto. To break down, we just discussed to break down, right? You have a car, yeah. your car broke down. What does it yeah. mean? Because it stopped working, right? It stopped working. My car was working and now it's not working. To yeah. cut back. To cut back. What do you guys think to cut back means? <clears throat> cut back. Um, to cut, reduce. That's exactly it. Yeah, okay. So, for example, if you guys are working in an environment where they're asking you guys for specific amounts, mm -hmm. and there's somebody who's working really hard and he's making double the amount, you don't want him to do that. So, you're going to go and ask him to. Cut back. Cut, yeah, cut back. Cut back, man, or we're going to beat you up outside. Take it easy, man. We don't want to work that much. All right. Uh, we, can use, you can, we can use this phrase uh, like we work in a, we work in a court, cut, cut back the hours, for example. That's, yes, 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 you could use it that way. I'm cutting back on my hours. That Yes, you can do that. You can do that. It's okay. like cutting corners. You can also use cutting corners. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, most phrasal verbs have two words. Remember I was telling you? But you are going to get three words because these are also very common. Oh, really? Some examples, yeah. Some examples are as follow. To put up with. To go out with. Now, you take two and put, and this counts as one. And then up, and then with. That's why the ones up here only count as two. To catch up. El two, okay. yeah, el two and the catch is, counts as one. So to put up with, to go out with, to check up on, and to cut down on. These are all examples of three words that are very common and you guys will hear. So where are we going with the phrasal verbs? Oh my goodness. Well, the thing is you have to identify and you have to also provide a little bit of stress. So <clears throat> these are used very commonly. And we think of it as, uh, we don't really, actually, we don't even really think about what's going on. We just hear it and then we just, you know, kind of go with the flow, but they're there. So these are some examples from, these are real life people that have said it. So it's like quotes, you know, damn your principles, stick to your party. Aquí está, stick to. This is a phrasal verb. When people find out, find out you're an actress. Find out is a phrasal word. Okay. Meditation helps me to calm down. Calm down. Do I exaggerate? Boy, do I. And I do it more if I could get away with it. Get away with. 
get away with. These words or phrasal, word, phrasal verbs are also known as multi-verb, multi-word verbs or compound oh, verbs. Okay. I don't know if you guys have heard of those before. Yeah. All right. And so besides the ones that we're looking at, there's actually, there's actually a few of these. So phrasal verbs, we have the examples. We have the real life examples. We have transitive and intransitive phrasal. Now, what's, what does this mean? Well, when a phrasal verb is transitive, you are taking a direct object and you are incorporating it into your conversation. When it's an intransitive, it is not direct. So what are some of the examples? Well, for transitive, fill in the form as quickly as possible. Because what we're doing is we're taking the actual object. There is a form and you have to fill it out. And so when you tell somebody to do it, you say it just like that. Fill in the form as quickly as possible. And then you show them the form, right? And then they could see it. Now, in transitive, if you are unhappy, please stand up. The lorry is starting to drop back or the tree could fall down or do not give in. If you guys notice, there is no object there. Okay. And what you're using is, for example, if you are unhappy, unhappy would be the, the object, but it's not directed or it's not a direct usage of it. You're using unhappy, but you're using it an, in an indirect manner. And so that's what we're trying to move with. Now, you guys will not see these now. We're gonna see them in the future, but it's very important because they do form a portion of phrasal verbs and you guys will hear those. All right, so to complete, this portion, the pronunciation, and we're gonna restart it tomorrow. And what we're gonna work on is identifying the phrases or the phrasal verbs. We're gonna be working on phrasal verbs that have two words. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on how to pronounce them correctly. And here we are. This is a little, a little trailer for you guys tomorrow. And these are the words, or these are the, the examples of words that we're gonna use for our exercises. And we're gonna practice how to say them correctly. Okay? Okay, sir. All right, ladies okay. and gentlemen, that's it for day number one. I think the introduction took a little bit longer, but, the, but for tomorrow, we're gonna be very busy. Okay, great, great. All so, right. All right, <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, have a good night. Nice mm -hmm. meeting you, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be waiting for you guys tomorrow. Okay, sir. Okay. Have, good have a good night, everybody. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night, good night.